gon' bring it to the table. Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. We gon' do it how you want it. Boss talk. Yeah, everybody on it. Boss talk. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not none. You know my dad walk on. Man, hey, man, we got this guy here. He back, man. This guy's mm -hmm. becoming a regular, right? Yes, he man, is. Man, all the way down from uh, Los Angeles, California, man. Kenyatta Sands is in the building, man. What's up, baby? What's up, y'all? This is family, y'all. Ten man, years in the making. Man, stop playing, man. Hey, man, I see you wearing that cool, man. It's fresh, man. It's oh, fresh, it's, fresh, this fresh, that, fresh. This that limited right here. Kinda, Say, man. You know. Man, we've been, you know, we've been been rocking with a cool man now for ever since 2008 I, i'm trying to remember the first guy that we uh we had rocked out with uh Don't man i don't forgot his name guy. but I, he was a it was a white guy he I was i can't a, remember his name yeah he was a good simon. people simon, simon that That's was him yeah. simon was the guy that we first started rocking with we had went down to atlanta we met lisa and thomas Nim down there mm -hmm. and then mike you know and all of the reps down there at uh the Cobb show and uh we met Simon after that shortly and then we ended up uh, going up to Vegas and rocking out with y'all and it's been history ever since it's been the history in the making just making a history just bam 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 we did it man so how, how you been? Man I've been fantastic man so and it always feels good to come here because it's family, man. I've been knowing y'all for so long, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's love, bro. Me and you, we talk a lot periodically on the phone. It's, it's hard to find somebody you can pretty much just, you know, have that chemistry to have enlightening conversations, man. Mm -hmm. So thank you, man. Yeah, yeah, it's been, we've come a long way. And uh, it's good that we're still here. It's good that we still got the support of everybody from, you know, from Texas to the whole nation, man. So people are still doing it. You know, a coup is a very unique situation. You know, they, you know, this is an organization that's black owned, you know, run and operated, you know, and they got a lot, a lot of young people who are involved that are really good at what they do. Yeah. And you have a co lot of core followers who follow because we have people come in the store and that, that's all they wear is a coup that would not touch any other brand but a coup. Yeah, one of our stores out here, Urban Connection, man, he has a whole. Yeah, we yeah, went over there. Over there. Entire, when we running low, we might go over there and holler at that boy. Yeah, no, he got it. He got the whole <laughs> warehouse. He got the whole warehouse. He does. At a, yeah, yeah. Those are my people too. So, so. just let, let, you know, with, with the way things are, man. You know, in the mu it, it, music, in the in the clothing and apparel industry, just uh, how are you liking the way that the designs are changing, especially uh, post COVID? You know, pre COVID, you had uh, you know. Uh, stores that pretty much were looking to do things that they were kind of, you know, they knew their knew where they were headed. But after COVID hit, things kind of spiraled out of control. People were closed. Things were scary at that time. Uh, how do you think things are looking right now? Well, what's interesting is that, you know, COVID wasn't that long ago so far as the economy wise. Mm -hmm. And uh, last year, um, some of our retailers experienced like the most amount of money they've ever seen in retail. They was all some ARAB money. Um, during that time, but once the once the the government money ran out, now everybody's pumped the brakes and everybody's getting nervous and they're just trying to find out you know what's going on. But for me, it's it's about survival of the fittest. You know, if uh, if you don't ain't got a design team, if you don't have the manufacturing muscle and all that, this is where RP55 does behind the brands that it represents. You know, and the cool you know cool hustle gang is you know is part of that same family, and these guys do what they've done for years. It's, I think it's like 15 years by now. Yeah. Um, but as a company, they've been around forever. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, I know these guys intimately and they're like, man, they're, they're some strong minds. They just, you know, they just don't want to be out in the front. But it's it's always a pleasure for me to work with people on that level because their they're, they're level, like Ralph and those guys is, is, is crazy. That's Steve from, Steve. With the guy? Uh, Steve from Dunk Masters. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, um, yeah, it's been a pleasure working with the company. And then now I'm out here, um, uh, trying to promote, um, our co collaborations with Dunk Master, uh, Sage Thomas. And, uh, it's, it's amazing because Ralph discovered them and was like, this is a great, my guy, don't say Ralph on the yeah, show. Yeah, Ralph, Ralph Reynolds, gotta tap bro. me and Ralph, you ain't yeah. tapped in the boss talk yet. You know, you my guy, man. And I ain't going to say what me and you done together, but yeah, you know, I'm your guy, nigga. So tap in. <laughs> yeah, so Ralph Reynolds, you know, he discovered them, and uh, now we're kind of like bringing it to the to the fold, where people are kind of seeing how our hip hop culture has taken over uh, street racing, yeah. you know, drag racing. You know, these guys are engineers, man. They've figured out a way to engineer a car that's probably the heaviest car made with real genuine steel on twenty six inch rims, and can push out, 
you know, over a, a thousand horsepower and can match any car that's pretty much on the road. With the, it's amazing. And these are all young dudes with their own money invested in something that's engineered that only they can engine and, and they mastering this stuff, man. These guys are figuring out ways to take the headlights out just to get more oxygen into the engines, man. And yeah. they, and they, and, they, and, they, and it's a culture. So he saw that on Vice and he was like, yo, this is great. And if you think about it, I watch uh, drag racing and then it's like, it's kind of dry. It's like, you know, and they're just trying to make it exciting as they can, but going there is an event in itself. Oh, we, we've definitely. So this is nothing like Fast and the Furious type of thing. No. This is nothing It's that like, quarter. You know, like, um, what was that section in Fast and Furious where they were um, drifting? Remember they would always race? Yeah. And it was, that was a short distance? Yeah. Uh, it's it really, something uh, like no, that, it's, but it's, it's just not drifting. It's like it's like the one, the first one, when you see Paul and them when they first came on, and that boy, instead of him stopping, he went in and, they, and he, he killed the, the white guy that got killed. You remember that mm -hmm. one? Where they just go from that first that first quarter, and he jump on there, and the, his, that, that Chinese guy, he tell him, don't. I think Paul said, don't race that car because he knew what was in it. Right. And they just go for a quarter. That's what they do on rims okay. in muscle cars. And that's that part right there. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I, don't know. We went to Yellow Belly. You've seen that years ago. No? I don't remember. No, I've never been. Been to Yellow Belly? No. Yellow Belly is a... a you never took me. Really? It, no. That was years probably before I met you. Because I'm telling you, I used to go out there with Junkyard and them. And, and, and it, that's kind of like what Ennis is, what they're here for. They're going to go out there. They're going to have slicksters on some of them big rims. Man. And they're going to have them 72 uh, Impalas out there. Yes, and they're they going to run down through but there. But the thing I can't understand about those cars, and when I was doing some research, I, I'm like, these cars look really good. And you race in a car that might wreck out. I'm like... Why would you do all that to that car? Man, you, you, you got to understand, this is such a street culture out there between bikes, cars, and all this. And, I, and I'm telling them, and I was talking to one of the managers, I was like, man, this actually is a, a brilliant thing because now you're teaching kids that they can use their engineering skills and get something that's attainable and race it and make good money. I mean, these guys are touring all over the country. And they're betting. These guys are betting like horse betting. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of betting going on. So this is our way of doing it. But it's hip hop. You see the kids out there talking. And, you know, we have our own lingo and our own way of doing this whole this whole racing thing. So when you watch it on on uh, on the on as you know, on Vice or you watch it on YouTube, you'll see the whole culture behind it. And it's beautiful. Like it's a good little you get some inside hustle from these guys you learn how to really hustle you learn how to do all that so it's kind of like watching poker you know what i'm saying you watch all these these brains and how they and how they playing tricks on each other to try to get somebody to race somebody knowing their car can get you know can get them easy you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. but you're gonna play like oh man whatever and then so you know you coming up on their money and you taking how, they they pink slip you know what i'm saying and you taking all that you know it's how like, long now have y'all um been doing the dunk master on the shirts in the coupe so this is new this is uh so it we're rolled out right I'm sorry. It has rolled out though. To we're gonna have the production soon. The production's coming oh, out. Oh, so it hasn't soon. been out to the. No, school. right now we got exclusive T-shirts that we're putting out. So Sage is actually come. He actually has some exclusive T-shirts that we have for this event. So we're actually doing an event today mm -hmm. at the uh, at four to six at at Brad Bird from four right. to six. So Urban Connection shout out. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the mall was you know like they were like oh this is great this is gonna be a great idea to actually have it in the mall which right. is gonna be very unique because at first we were trying to think about doing stores that only have. A freestanding situation, but, but I like um, the fact that it's in the store because in the mall because to me it's more secure. The cars are more secure than being unless you're going to have it outside and have security watching the cars. Exactly. You know, somebody out there watching it at all times. But if it's inside the store, it's more secure. And we're going to have the uh, the cool thing is now we're going to have his trailer wrapped and his cars wrapped or whatever you know really with cool. a, with a cool. So that's going to be good for the mm -hmm. brand. But again, it's just really it's it's about exposure. This guy's a got seven million people that's following this stuff and it's. And it's blowing up. And it's like, you know, at the end of the day, it's just something to do. See, the reason why I'd ask you about the shirts if they're out yet, because I was just curious to know what cities are um, more into the dunk than which ones aren't. Because not all cities know about dunk. Or yeah, it's more of a involved. southern it's more of a southern thing so and a Midwest thing. and Because like, it was showing the shirt sales. Because yeah. I'm sure that whoever is into it is going to, you know, gravitate to buying those shirts and wearing them. But the cool thing about it is that the, the design team behind it created some really awesome product. Like we got, we have a whole collection coming out for Holly, for uh, holiday. holiday. And I'm telling you, I'm talking about Letterman jackets. I'm talking about hoodies, sweatsuits and all that. And I'm telling you, that stuff looks better than the inline stuff that we have, mm -hmm. you know, because it's a dope theme. It's a real theme. It's not some made up like, yo, this is a real thing. And we have the exclusive rights to doing Dunk Master 
on our gear as a collaboration. Okay. And uh, when you meet this guy, Sage Thomas, I'm telling you, man, this dude right here is the real deal. And He's, is this something that y- y'all are going to be doing more often, having a lot more collaborations with other people? Yeah, we try to have collaborations with people we feel that are relevant, you know, that are that are cool, that, you know, that 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 embody our, our culture, you know. And uh, we're not ashamed of what we do and who we are. You know what I'm saying? And this is why we've lasted because we've never like, oh, we're strictly streetwear. We only want to be into, uh, you know, high end. It's like, no, we make stuff for our people. Mm-hmm. Period. It's made wow. for us. That's You've cool. been in the game for a long time, man. Like, you one of those guys, man, when you think about apparel. So, you know, the, the good thing about it is if it was something that wasn't going to work or you didn't feel comfortable speaking on, your passion would couldn't lie. I've talked to you for years, so it would be hard for you to fake it with me. So I kind of believe you. You're <laughs> right, 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 right. You know, but it speaks for itself. I mean, success, we've had, you know, uh, a lot of success with the brands, and we're still moving, man. We're still moving in a lot of good accounts. We got a lot of top accounts that carry the brand. And like I said, you know, the streets ain't going nowhere, bro. This is why I have dedicated my whole entire life to street fashion. Because at the end of the day, it's like, man, we ain't going nowhere, man. And we and we love something new. We always trying to get on a new thing. Now it's stacked denims, man. Now it's, you know, stacked, um, uh, you know, um, uh, what do you call those things? Um, it, it's, it's nylon fabrics now. You know, we're doing poly tree coats with, you know, with stacked denims, you know, stacked stack design and whatnot. So um, there's a lot going on with that. In fact, I actually got them to do, start introducing corduroy. Okay. So we got some corduroy stacks. Nobody has that but us. I, I like that because, I like I said. With the matching jackets. It, so ain't, now it ain't your first rodeo. <laughs> it's not what? Yeah, it's not his first rodeo. So when I, when I hear you talk about, and that, yeah, that's my additive. I mean, I only expect that or more from you because of the, the, the time that you've put into this, being one that came in the game early on like you did. You know what I mean? Right. You're just one of those guys that when you think about, uh, you know, fashion, uh, when you think about uh, our hip hop culture, you one of those guys that you can think back and your name pops up with the best of them. So big, big shout out to you. Appreciate you know what you I mean? Thanks, so that, thanks that's the that. dope thanks part about being a, a person who's consistently giving their all to something. Yeah. Most people just, you know, they one foot in, one foot out. But you really just dove into fashion, man. What makes you keep that tenacity and that drive? Well, it's because I've been exposed to what the possibility is, you know, like in the nineties, when we all came out as owners, you know, we watched FUBU and, you know, uh, actually just FUBU, we watched FUBU kind of just blow up to a half a billion dollar company. Yes. You know, an average um, brand at that moment was doing, you know, a few hundred million, Rockerware, a few hundred million, you know, Beyonce had her own brand and Fat Farm and, you know, you name it. All these guys are making hundreds of millions of dollar brands. Um, and so for me, it's it's it just shows the power of our community and our and our and our drive and our you know and I love the fact that as an as an artist that you know our people are so creative man we go from one thing to the next you know and we give shine to a lot of um, we give shine to a lot of creators you know mm-hmm. and so I'm just you know, great to be in a, in company of great creators and I'm I'm great to be around to to keep showing something new. You know, and trying to enlighten these kids as you, you know, this young generation. But like, man, you know, keep coming with it. Keep coming with your flavor, man. And let us, you know, let us roll behind you. Let us kind of innovate. And let's innovate together because, you know, when we work together, it's fun. You know, it's real fun between music, between fashion, between cars, between all the things that we do. Whether we riding bikes down the streets, you know, on, mm-hmm. doing wheelies all day long, you know, with our girl hanging on the back, you know, like, mm-hmm. I see that in L.A. crazy nowadays, dudes be on their back doing big wheelies with their girl hugging yeah. behind them. I mean, only people like us would do stuff like that, man. Because so L.A. So has a huge bike. <laughs> I've never went anywhere else and seen that many bikes on the street. They crazy. This stuff is nuts. I see it every, I see it, not that, every day, but I see fit. it, you know, huh? That's why everybody's so fit. <laughs> Yeah, well, we broke. That's why we fit. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have that kind of money to sit around and eat all day. That's well, for dang sure. And that gas price, is, is it helps with that. You just ride your bike. Yeah, $7 a gallon. That's ridiculous. $7. So I coming it, down here to Texas, this is easy for you. My car, 16 gallons, cost me like $106, like, like yesterday. 
And I'm like, good Lord, the mercy. But it's like, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, ours are four dollars, but we still fill up for a hundred bucks. Yeah, I remember that four dollars was two dollars last time I was out here. Yes. So yes, it's real. Yes. When is it? When do you think it might go back down? Soon. Uh, already, you just gotta look at like what the oil, um, what the the crude is selling for per mm. barrel. So if it's under a hundred bucks, which I think it is today, it's gonna go down a little mm -hmm. bit. You mm -hmm. know, but, you know these these guys are profiteers. So at the end of the day, you know. If you don't complain, they're not gonna drop it. Exactly. And I know, because I was, uh, they interviewed somebody, because I was surprised that I was at Beverly Center and they had a guy charging $7.50 a gallon. And everywhere else is no more than six forty. And I don't mm -hmm. care if you're going to the higher end Chevrons or the mobiles, even at the highest price, it was six fifty. This mm -hmm. guy was able to get seven fifty, and he's like, well, look, you know, I've been and here. And he for have people who buy it. it. All, mm. all day, you know, and he's like, look, if they want to pay for it and don't want to go down the street to get it. He must be at a lo at a very convenient location. You know, sometimes you, you have one that's higher, but it's convenient. Like, man, I can't. But a whole dollar is kind of worth me going down the street. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's like, you know, you, you want to give away 16, 20 bucks just on some like convenience. Well, you know, some people some got people like do that. it. Some you work do with it. a lot of different companies. Yes, sir. Um, what what makes a coup different from the companies that you previously worked for? Um, I was brought on by Lisa. Okay. And I was so impressed by Lisa Bloomingdale. Um, that Shout out to Lisa, man. She supported us a lot of years, man. When we, 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 we would talk, we would talk for hours and we still talk for hours. Like okay. we literally talk for hours. It's she hired hard. you, right? Yeah, she hired me and- I tried to get her not to hire you. I was trying to get get her to get Becky. I remember that? <laughs> and, and she evidently seen something in you that uh, Becky wasn't, uh, wasn't able to deal with. And I, could, some, I understand why I now, some, but I just remember back when I, I didn't know, I know you, man. I know. So, uh, At least he's yeah. truthful. Yeah, I, I, I was just being real. She asked me Becky? about it. Yeah, Becky. But she and went to work. For, did Becky go? Oh, you know, you know, <laughs> you know, girl named Becky. And you know who Becky That's is, America, right? That's America, man. Come on, oh, man. Oh man, the white you girl don't named give Becky. It to Becky, bro. Okay. Why are you tripping? All right. All right, boss talk. But I didn't do it. I mean, he. I didn't do it. She didn't do it. And okay. when I seen what she had done, the move she had made. It's because I didn't know you. If I have knew you, of course, I probably would have said you. I didn't know you. She asked me, who did I think? She asked me about Becky. I said, get her. That's who you need because she sold the hell out that Coogee. But, right, right, right. but I didn't know you, but I definitely know that I know why she picked you now. I know why. Uh, and if she hadn't, I'd probably never knew a lot of things that me and you have connected on so many different things in so many different ways. Uh, she knew my fate. You know what I mean? She knew what was best for my fate through Kenyatta Sands. That's what's up. Nah, but uh, mm -hmm. it, so, so I, I want to know because where a coup is concerned, um, you know all the, the inside stuff that the public don't know yet. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you can let us know about? You can sort of sneak it out there as what's coming up later on that we might be able to look out for. Um, I think okay, what's something new? I think for them, it's just like, you know, we, we're constantly having to come out with new product every month and every delivery. Um, and then, you know, we try to emphasize certain things that we know we done well with. So our successes have been our sweaters. Like that's mm -hmm. been a real big deal. Yeah, y'all um, winter, y'all winter again yeah. is like, no, nothing can match up to it. Yeah, so we turned that up. You know, our washes are still good on our denims. Like I said, we're introducing corduroy mm -hmm. in a big way, like big, well corduroy. Huh? Are y'all gonna bring back shoes? Um, we're in talks with that. I don't know um, where we are with that, but we do. Have, we are gonna. We are gonna have belts. You know, some other accessories. You know, we got duffel bags now. We got backpacks that we're bringing in. So there's a few accessories that are new uh, to where we brought in. We also have underwear now. So now you can get you. I mean, literally from head to toe, you mm. can do, you can do our brand. Except from not the toe yet. Yeah, we used from to do the toe, but yeah, we got flip flops head. though. No, we got okay. sliders. So we okay. got sliders. So okay. you know, all the retailers got sliders, and they're nice. Like you got to see the nice colors we have um, that are currently shipping out for uh, for our sliders. So it's okay, a very cool. yeah, those are very nice. And so, like I said, I mean, the brand has been consistent, and the good thing is, is that our people support it, and we support the people. You know, because all our themes are about us. It's about how we grow up in, you know, in the neighborhood, how we grow up in the community and everything that we talk about. So we, as we evolve, the, you know, as the community evolves, we evolve and, you know, we just try to make sure we keep you fresh, you know. Is T.I. still involved with Aku? Yes, uh, absolutely. He's still involved with it and he still rocks it too. I catch him. Because you don't really see him rocking as much as he used to. 
But it was funny. I've actually been posting a few things of him wearing it recently. So, okay. you know, sometimes like it, it might not have the big logo or cool, but right. if you know the brand, like, the, you know, like the Fox logo or you see something to that effect, you'll see him rocking it. And, uh, you know, like I said, he's he's evolving, too. You know, a mm -hmm. lot of people don't know T.I., um, but my impression of T.I. is that's a real deep thinker. Mm. And, you know, people don't know, like, you know, you can easily look at him because he's relatable, but you have no idea how much of a businessman this dude is. Tell me something that he has um, imparted on you that has stuck with you where you're like, man, I oh. never thought of that. <laughs> um, well, we don't really talk that much. But when I do deal with him, and when you really deal with him on a real business level, he's really professional, mm -hmm. and he's sharp. Mm -hmm. And and one thing I did know as, a, as an observer is that he really loves his family. He stays on that phone 24-7 on his family, so his mm -hmm. family's real. Like, he loves his kids, he loves everything about it, and he's a serious dude. So don't let all the, all the what you see on TV fool you. Mm -hmm. That brother is sharp. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, I'm impressed with all the stuff he was able to accomplish in the time he was able to do it and to still maintain a family structure. It's incredible, you know, cool. and he does a lot. So, I, you know, I, my hat's off to him. I know there's drama out there, but that, I again, know. again, I, know. I tell people to look, get out of people's personal lives. But when you're in the limelight and you're a celebrity, I'm not going to say that's what you sign up for. But really, in today's day and time, that's what comes with it. But the thing is, their lives are not our lives. I know that, but a lot of people. Okay, you have people. Not to say, not to say that they're, they're totally um, free from sin. Like you know, they you, because you're a, a celebrity, you can't not. I mean, you can commit sin and you can get away with it, like where we can't, or it's still any more. It's just like Columbus Short came on here the other day, uh -huh. and we were talking about mental illness and things that people go through, and I, and and he was telling us about a friend of his who went through a certain situation, and he's saying that he went through. What I was saying is that um, we had Columbus Short on here the other day, and he was talking about his friend that went through a certain situation. And he said he goes through it too, but I said the difference between your friend and you is that when you go through it, your paparazzi going to you know, catch it, put it out there, and it's going to blast all over social media, Internet, because the day and time that we're in, when a regular Joe, it's not going to get worldwide attention unless it just, they just did something stupid on the Internet purposely. Right. You know, or, you know, whatever, which most people don't just go on there and just do crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. But even if you didn't go on there with on social media, somebody going to catch it because of who you are and put it out there. So that's the difference between, you know, just being a celebrity in today's day and age. You can't really just say and do anything. You know what I mean? You have to watch what you say. You have to watch how There's you no treat privacy. your... Right. You have to even watch how you treat your kids. I mm -hmm. mean, I heard somebody told me the other day that I don't um, spank my kids, you know, because when they were younger, going through therapy now, they realize that they were being abused um, because they were being whooped. And I'm, I was trying to ask them, I was like, when you say whoop, are you meaning that you were physically beaten, like beaten, beaten or your mom spanked you or your dad spanked you because you were out of line. But there's a lot of people in today's day and age when you go to um, counselors or psych, they're making it sound like any sort of spanking is abuse. And I don't agree with that. There's a fine line, yes, but there is a line. It's the difference between you disciplining your child and abuse. What do you think about that? I think a lot of it has to do with how you value abuse and, and the mentality part of it. I mean, I just think that, you know, for us, that may have saved some of us from going to the streets. We remember that pain. Um, you know, when we grew up, you know, you got a spanking that was typically a belt. Right. You know, um, and, and it can be a, you know, it can be a, a what was it, um, an extension cord. Mm -hmm. uh, if you was from the country, I had my grandma tell me to go out and go get your switch. But looking back on that, do you feel now that you're grown and in today's day and age, you personally, I'm not talking about everybody else's, you I, know, I think that, do you think that that was abuse? I don't think that was abuse because I think you knew it was coming. You know, you messed up. This is There's a consequence. And I think there's a lesson to messing up and having a consequence come right after that. Um, the statement that you just made, I disagree into the point where you have people out there who um, have been abused, mm -hmm. whether it be a spousal abuse or whatever. And I know that if I raise my voice to him in a certain way, this is just hypothetically speaking, okay? Right. Don't take it literally. But if I um, raise my voice to him and um, 
I'm the woman and he didn't like it. He, and I know because how well, that's he domestic. is. That's the, I'm thinking about kids. I know, I'm, but yeah. I'm just saying that, you know, I know that I'm doing something that he doesn't like and I know what's coming next after that. Right. It, it's just the way how you said it is how I'm perceiving it. Which no, I'm, I'm, I know I'm, ta- that's, I'm talking about like, you know, if you're, know, if you're a little knucklehead and you, you're doing all this wrong and you want to come home, then the belt's coming out. I didn't do that. As a, I know what you meant, but some I know women how do people it. They, so now they be like, okay, maybe it, it. So maybe I don't hit them a certain way. Maybe I hit them with a spank or whatever right. the case is. And I try to, I try to do it differently with my kids, but I mm-hmm. can't speak on how you raise your children. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I, I know that, you know, at the end of the day, you know, if you out there whipping these kids like really bad, like, you know, this right. to me, when we say abuse is like, yo, you, you know that's bruises. abuse. Like, you have bruises to show. Yeah, you're doing I mean, too much. black eyes, yeah, you have, nah. that's too much. That's too much. But if you just giving a little, uh, 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 and, you know, and, and there's only a certain age you going at to, because you're not right. trying to do that to your 14, 15 year old son. Mm-hmm. That ain't going to work. You know, there might be something a little different that you work with. Um, but your, your kids remember that, man. They mm-hmm. remember that, uh, what you did. And, you know, and, it, and it's crazy because sometimes, you can be the bully. Mm-hmm. And now they got to figure out how to deal with your bullying to them. And it's and it's already enough bullying going on. So now it's mental. So now now you do have to, now you do have to think about the mental side of it. Right. Because you might have somebody in this school talking all this crap and here you are screaming at them and then actually physically abusing them. It really, you know, it can really change that person's dynamic. You know, some people are just not really built for that. And next thing you know, you end up making that person more of a, really reclusive person and, and nervous and scared of you, mm-hmm. you know, and it's scared of what you might do to that person. And that's a frightening situation. And that can turn into depression that can Which turn into true. a lot of uh, lack of confidence. So there is a lot to be said about how parents are treating their kids right now and how that's manifesting because it's not the normal situation where the whole community knows about it. It's more like, you don't even know what these kids is going through nowadays. They go through and so much abuse. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is why if you look at how internet is, people are quick to snap on you. Mm-hmm. And that says a lot. When somebody says something negative to you, you feel that. Whether you defended it, whether you try to say, I'm brushing that off. The fact of the matter is when somebody comes in and gets into your head and says something negative about you, you're going to feel that. But every, but at the end of the day, you're supposed to... Not everybody, all parents don't know their kids, regardless. And that's right. why kids do things and you're like, oh, my child wouldn't, but they out there doing stuff. Um, at the end of the day, you try to know your child, know what works with your child, even from a young age. Because I've had kids where I've tried um, to put them in the corner. Mm-hmm. Or let me talk to you. Let me explain to you. Right. And that don't work and this don't work. And okay, like, you're going to start getting popped. You right, know what right, I mean? Right, right. So... You have to try different things to see it works. And each case is different. So you might not do this all the time or you might not do that all the time. It just depends on what the situation warrants for. It's tough. So that's what that's how I look on it. It's tough because an adolescent wants to be an adolescent. And an adolescent doesn't trust what you have to say about anything. Right. Man. And, and then at the same time, you're like, well, look, man, I'm, I'm trying to keep you out of these trees, blah, blah, blah. And it's just, mm-hmm. it's tough because I, you know, I, I know when it comes to music, for example, you know, I try to encourage my kids to stop listening to some of the stuff that they're listening to because it has an adverse effect. That, mm-hmm. It has an adverse effect. I mean, it you hypnotizes listen, you, really. That's what it does. Music has an, an, an effect on you one way or another. Right. You know, if you listen to sorry, depressing music, you will feel depressed. If you listen to upbeat, you know, popping music, like, you know, if you go to church and you start hearing that, you know, that, you know, you clapping and all that, that gives you energy. Mm-hmm. It changes your hormonic you know, feeling, and so you you got energy. So nowadays, music, they have figured out a way to kind of take an 808, the stuff that we are that we are accustomed to because we love bass, mm-hmm. but then put it to tracks that are that are really like low frequency. Mm-hmm. And then you see that I see the effects. I don't care what nobody else says. I see the depression. These kids are growing up depressed, and there's a lot of parents that are really dealing with seriously depressed kids, and they're having nightmares. And they're dealing with a lot of things that... And they don't know why. Well, yeah, and you try to explain to me, it's your music. You want to watch all these things on, on TV shows. I mean, they got, man, you should see the stuff they got for these kids that the kids are gravitating towards mm-hmm. and the amount of filth and the amount of things. That, and, you, and guys like, well, why don't you tell them? I said, well, look, if I tell my kids not to do that, and let's say they're in my, in my atmosphere and we say, no, don't play that, they'll go ahead somewhere else. They got the phone and go play it. And it's easy. 
That's why you take the phone away. No, you, you can't stop. You can't. I mean, no, because I got homies that got phones. So you take the phone from him, he's going to go to his homie. The homie's going to show it's him. It's not going to stop. I mean, you just have to pray. I think a lot of the things that we just talked about uh, is consistent of, of what children are being introduced to. But just make sure that you introduce them to something spiritual so that you can have some balance, some structure. That integrity and stuff is built from a very early age. So if you're already building that as well, because we're not doing the things that we need to do as parents sometime to me. You know what I mean? We got to give them that instillment. We got to give them. I know a lot of times it's like, man, you know, you, you coming down on them, but that child's going to remember that too. So you got to make sure you don't give up. You got to do some strict parenting when it comes down to injecting different things into your child as well, because they're going to get the other, like you just said, ain't no way around it. That's what's happening. That's mm -hmm. what they're going to want more. But what they don't want, just like medicine, is good for them if you give it to them and make sure that you give them the proper amount. Right? Because <laughs> we, we, that, that's the part that everybody don't speak on, is that what, it, what, what can we do? Mm -hmm. What we can do is we can inject scripture into them. Mm -hmm. We can inject uh, different things like you, you and I talk about history into them we can talk about it yes yeah, boring to them they don't care about it but at some point it's gonna kick in mine kicked in i'm pretty sure some things that was told to you early on that you didn't make think made any sense begin to kick in so at some point i believe it kicks in but you gotta not give up just because of what you see because what is faith faith is the substance of things Hope, hope for, for the evidence of things not, not seen. seen so you gotta make sure that you stand firm on the faith that it takes to make sure that, hey, man, this is how I'm going to show you. I'm going to walk this in front of you. Right. That and I part. guarantee you, as I walk this in front of you, at mm -hmm. some point, it's going to kick in. Right. And you're going to say, you know what? i seen all of that. But oh. i seen something different in my dad. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. i seen all of that. But it was something different about him. He always did this, and he always did that. And that's what makes the difference in life because I value my father because early on my father was my God. And I think a lot of times you go back to those stages as you grow and develop because you get kids at some point. Right. You see what I'm saying? And Absolutely, now yeah. all of this stuff started to make sense, yep. but you can't give up on the early end of it because of what we see. You know, what it is is that, okay, sometimes you're trying to explain calculus to somebody that can only understand basic math. Mm. Mm -hmm. And so to your point, you know, they, they might not be able to receive it now, but until they, but once they graduate to that level, then they're like, oh, you know, because a lot of things we talk about, we talk about elevated level of thinking. Yes. You know, like my last, I always have these thoughts like every, every, you know, my next level of understanding is like, my son hit me, was like, see, he's like, so why are we here on this planet? You know, seriously, you just want to know why we even here. And I said, How you know what? How old was he when he asked that question? This is recent. Okay. I asked that when I was five. No, this is recent. I'm telling you, I used to ask that. I, that's a question that, it, it's a very good question. So, you know, I started thinking because of COVID, I've learned a lot of basic things, right? And I was like, look, we are a service to each other. Believe it or not, I am here to service you. You are here to service me as a cipher. It goes in a circular motion. You know, so when you're in your community and you're thinking about a community, then you think about what you do to contribute to the community. So you are here to contribute. You might be the guy who's the mechanic. She might be the doctor, you know, but the doctor don't know anything about mechanics. She can't, mm -hmm. you don't want her fixing your car. You got my man Elvis <coughs> over here who's the chef. He cooks way better than her and him. So I'm, he's cooking, but they're all playing a part in the community service. So mm -hmm. you are part of, so God made you a certain way. Not everybody can be a rapper. Not everybody can be a basketball player. Not everybody can be good with, with finances, but somebody might be funny. Somebody might give you some good advice. Somebody might really know how to talk to your heart where most people can't, you know? And all those people are important. That's why the, 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 the cipher you have, you guys are serving each other. Like you serve each other all day long. You know, whether you're gonna be a confidant or a good, you know, somebody who might take your words and try to make you feel better for the day, that's a service. So as for me, I look at it, I'm a service to my kids, to my wife, to my community and everything. You know what I'm saying? So when I'm talking to y'all, you're part of my cipher. So when I'm talking to you and you talking to me, we're trying to figure out higher, higher thinking, but we're servicing each other. I agree. Let me ask you something about this, uh, and it's going to change it a little bit, but just having a, a issue like like what, what Will Smith had the other night, you mm -hmm. know, um, where this, this, this 
thing happens to where he snaps into this person that slaps uh, Chris Rock um, in the in front of the world. What? Um, how do you how do you deal with the family after that? Because they've already had a lot of issues, man. That family has to be going through something. We were just talking about family. So when you think about the Willows and 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 and, and the Jaden, whatever, you know, how do you think these kids digest what they're having to witness? And that goes from the August Alcina to the to the to the Jada to all the stuff that they're seeing, man. Because I could say that it's it's just the way things happen in families, and it's just out there. But a lot of this stuff is next level. I think that people um, somehow separate these people from having feelings, like they're not humans, you know. So in other words, you're entertaining. You're like a, a box or something, like a phone or something. And I'm like, well, at the end of the day, everybody has the same emotions. They have the same desires. And so it's, you know, when you when you're being embarrassed or you, you you're constantly being barraged with you know, he said it, he was crying. He's like, look, man, you know, I make all these movies and I guess I'm supposed to put a smile on every time I get disrespected. But you can only imagine the amount of disrespect that, you know, that Will Smith's been getting lately. Yeah. I mean, he's been bombarded. He's a meme now, dude. He's a worldwide meme, not just a neighborhood. We he's a and worldwide. it boiled all the way up. Come on, man! It's like exploded. Yeah, and he's but like, what about now the we kids? Talk about him I want to talk about um, the kids. I know he's banned for ten years. N- not only that, but they talk. I saw in an article it said that he was going to go to rehab, and I'm like, rehab for what? Is not alcohol? Is it for his temper? Is no, it for- it's for, I think it's for the media, but it, uh, it's for people who be watching to give people a sense of he got disciplined. I, I don't get it. Like I said, my thing is more so about the kids. Like, what do you think? How does that affect their children? How does that affect them? And, and well, not just the, not just their, their kids. kids are grown. Actually. Everybody's kids. Everybody's kids. Everybody's kids. Because the thing is, you You're know, in one the thing. Light back again. The one thing I learned about in, being in sales, you learn about facts and impressions, right? Impressions is really set by what you see. And it's hard to change that impression. So if you're going to try to tell your son not to hit somebody, well, Will Smith did. You know, so every time an entertainer goes out and does something that we're like, man, we're totally against, it's hard to tell our kids not to do it. So that's why when I look at these entertainers and when they're out there threatening, like, you know, how Kanye West threatened um, D.L. Hughley, he lost me as a fan. I was like, I'm good. You know, this it's not always hard. It just depends on how you raise your kids. As well, cause it depends on how old your children Listen, are. Once if, they get, once if, they- if your children, if you put instill a certain type of um, moral value in them from early and certain standards from early, even when they see that, they, they might look at it like, oh, my God, or wow, or laugh or whatever. But they're not going to do it. But if it's a case where they were already like raised like, to the wolves, I'm going to say because you didn't really raise them. They were just in the house. Then it, they're more sub, you know. They're more. What should I say? They more will do it, so to say. The scary part is. Let me tell you something. I live by Crenshaw High School. Okay. The other day they had a hundred kid fight. Hundred okay. kids at a high school having a fight. They planned it. I'm sorry. Did they plan it? I'm just saying, it's just the whole like, oh, I'm on the phone, we're gonna have this fight, and everybody's talking, having these fights. So I'm saying that, you know, even when a guy like Will Smith, who made it his point to be an angel, a complete angel in the market, you know what I'm saying? Never going off handle, whatever, and here he is on the biggest stage worldwide where CNN is talking about this. You know, now you got a black man smacking another black man. It's powerful. I, I, like I said, Chris Chris Rock, um, I, he never pushed put me pushed me in the mind of somebody that would be out here doing physical altercation like that. He that's not his that's not his uh, it, it, they call it mo. That's not that's not who Chris Rock is. But he d- he does do his jokes. I mean that's something everybody does jokes. But I mean a lot of stuff that he's done over the time. You know. Um, you know, he depicted certain things for certain groups of people that didn't look like him in certain ways so that he could be accepted by that group of people. So when you think about that and, and, and all of the wall come tumbling down, you start to understand that, you know, you got to be careful on how you treat the people that you come from and that you look like. Yeah. I, I can say that. And shout out to Bill Cosby. Yep. You know, shout out to uh, different people who who said, you know, one thing and looked at us in a way as if our youth and our children uh, uh, couldn't couldn't do better. 
or they wasn't given afforded that opportunity to have a better light in life. So I really, really look at, hey, man, we need to take a self-check and pull ourselves up when it comes down to integrity and culture, man, as people, as, as black people. Who, who, who walk around here with opportunity that has been given, but then understanding that the people who are less fortunate don't counsel culture them, but try to be there for them in a way to where you can uplift them as they're being processed through their mental about where they come from. Some of their parents uh, were, 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 were put in jail falsely. Someone was put in jail because they did something wrong. There's a lot of fatherless homes out there. Right. There's a lot of mothers that are not in homes out there. Yeah. there that was a crack epidemic. Mm -hmm. So we gotta stop acting like this stuff didn't happen and we gotta start looking at a true picture and trying to give our children a better way to look at, hey man, we doing it this way and this is the right way and we did do it wrong at one point, but now we cleaning ourselves up. We got to stop trying to act like we better than everybody off jump just because we may have been afforded a little better opportunity than others. I'm being real. Right. So that's how I look at it. But at the end of the day, I look at certain things and I, and I, I mean, look, another subject, uh, the one you talked about the other day about uh, Monique and Lee Daniels finally coming back together, uh, finally trying to squash their beef. Um, but at the end of the day, it happened in the front of everybody the same way. It wasn't on the magnitude of a Chris and Will, but it was on the magnitude of, hey, man, y'all not paying us right. And then instead of Lee Daniel him allegedly trying to help her to get her pay right because she was an Oscar winner, they decided to cancel culture their own people. So we try to act like this ain't happening all the time. This thing is happening all the time and then Lee comes back and say hey man I apologize I was wrong and in front of the world here we go but look at all the stuff that we just seen and look at all the way that everybody look at all those relationships that got tore up along the way right uh, it was a lot of relationships that got tore up behind them not agreeing Monique has a following Lee Daniels have a following people said you know what the hell with you the hell with you and they split mm -hmm. but one thing I can say I love about Monique she didn't make it stop her she now became like on social media and she does terrific on social media. Have you ever seen her on social media? I no, mean, it's a woman, she, man. She'd be she watching She <laughs> has all, she'd be doing her workout. She'd be talking to her babies. She'd be doing, she'd be going hard on social media and she keep on uplifting people. She keep, she didn't make it put her in a shell and go over here and just disappear because a lot of people Can't take do, that do that. Yeah. Do depression and just, crawl in the corner and you never see them again. Right. But I can tell you that did not happen to Monique and I love her for that. I love the way how she handled everything. I think a lot of people are starting to see the two different sides of like sticking for what you believe in even though you know there might be a sacrifice or going the easy route and selling out. And I think that, um, you know, uh, when it comes back to Will and all that, you know, we, we do have to mention the fact that you had a guy like Chris, Chris Rock um, you know, making, you know, making li not light of the situation, but here you have Jada Peek and, and Will Smith protesting the fact that he didn't get nominated. And then he's going to take, pay, put phone in him and like, well, you were invited in the first place. Like how you, what do you mean you're not invited in the first place? Like, so, so Chris, man, honestly, like you got to know that that, that plays a part too. Cause here you are placating to an audience, you know, to act, to make you feel like you, you're more accepting to that audience and not giving props to your community. And that goes right. back to what I'm saying. We have to get back to being a community. And once we are, we'll be powerful. But until then, it's going to be this whole sensational life. Let's figure out a way to make, you know, money off of this scenario. We'll just donate. I don't know how many millions of viewers, everybody in wa watching this whole slap. Come on, man. Like, you know, this is... It's, it, it's, it's, it's negative, but then he he can capitalize off of it. Everybody's capitalizing now, on it. Now, now, now the, another thing you look at, you was talking about Kanye earlier. Kanye uh, uh, and Pete Davids, uh, you know, Pete is with Kim now, and they did their first red carpet event last night. And, mm. and what I'm saying is, <laughs> I think about Kanye, you were saying <laughs> Kanye this and that, but Kanye has his own demons to fight off with Man. this one because he's at a point now where he's pretty much uh, losing his family and what a big beautiful family he had he had a nice uh uh family of mixture there that hey them kids and they still his kids but this thing of where you saying he talked about dl hughley let me tell you something man here's what you got to understand man you reap what you sow bro i'm just saying like how did do you, you hear what this, i just said how do you threaten this man on on uh on the internet man it's crazy. but you reap what you sow 
Everything that people doing gonna come right back to them. Mm-hmm. You yeah. ain't got to worry about fighting these battles for the. I'm gonna stand up. Let me get up and say something. No, you don't. God will fight your battles for you. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I feel like everybody who sowed this bad seed will reap that bad harvest. Yeah, I really do. Mm-hmm. I just don't feel like you get away with it. We gotta stop capitalizing on people's downfall. You know, that's. I mean. You know, even to D.L. Hughes and everybody else that wants to tap in to try to get ratings. I'm like, look, man, this is this is a man's family and he's going through it because if you have kids, you know what it's like to do. You know, it's like like I said, you cannot re- remove the emotions from a person who's real. Like you act like these guys are robots. Think about that for a second. You're about to if, if you've been in a marriage. For 20 years. For six years. 20 years. Okay, but I'm saying like this. You. In, no. yeah, 25, baby. 25. 25 years. But six years. Let's go back to it. Dr. Get... Kamani. No, <laughs> anyway, so um, so you got six years in, lo- in love with this woman. You got beautiful bi- kids with this woman. Now she's now she's done with you. And next thing you know, she's parading this another guy. Pete. In, 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 in your life. And then now you're competing with him. And then trying to see your kids, I can only, I, I feel the pain that's coming out of the situation. He's just trying to, you know, put it out there where everybody can, can chime in on it. But I'm like, yo, once you become a public figure, man, you're going to take both sides of that coin. There's going to be people loving you, a whole bunch of people hating you hey. and on a complete opposite spectrum. And I'm like, look, man, at the end of the day, I try to say, hey, when we grew up, we did not really get into the personal lives of our entertainers because we know it's a hot mess. Well, you you couldn't because of social media. This thing has made it more up close and personal. Man, it's a hot mess. So, so like, you didn't know as much that was going on back then. You only had but it's not about pa- business. Had, no, but you had that book. Yeah. What was that magazine? But called? it's not your business. But if it's in a magazine like Jet or something back yeah. in the days, you see it. Yeah. And yeah. if it had the bionicness of what we're dealing with today, Man. it would be a whole nother level of discrediting, level. disgrace, and all that other stuff. I mean, but those like, gossip uh, columns. People, a lot of people didn't believe what they saw in there. Like, oh, it's tabloids. Just, tabloids yeah. is not true. Is this not? But now it become a thing it's where a everything reality. is so harsh. You know, that you're like, okay, that's true. That's true. That really happened. Yeah, but again, it's like, why am I devoting my life to their life? Like, I really don't. Some I mean, people don't have nothing better to do. You should have something better. I think people did it back in the days when they was dealing I'm just with saying, it. They, was, they just couldn't it do might it. Be good. It might be good for the haircut talk, you know, just to have a chop it up and let it be, you know, because to us it's inconsequential. This is not our life. So we talk about it because it's not something we really have to deal with. Correct. Like, we really don't it. have to sit there and call none of this. That's none of our problem. We're just talking about it because it's, it's interesting. But, like, yeah, like, you know, let's just think for a minute. If that was your predicament, how would you feel? No, you're right, 100%. Let me ask you one more. I get, I got, I'm going to get you out of here, but we've had uh, Faison Love on the show, and we've had Country Wayne, uh, uh, Guy Mike Bless on the show. And uh, uh, one, the it's the old versus the new, like I told Faison when I talked to him. You got the old way of thinking that uh, uh, comedy and movies and entertainment is. Then you got the new way, which is the phones and basically people killing it on the vibe of, hey, man, I'm making millions. on. I don't have to go on TV to make millions. But then then you have a guy like Faison that came on here and was like, hey, you know, but we get residuals. We get money from way back and it's steadily coming in. That don't get you no residuals. Um, Being one that's watched both sides of it because you can speak on it, uh, do you think that the phone way is is more prevalent or do you think that the old way the movies the the who is it hulu and all mm-hmm. of those ways that the the, the 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 powers on stars which way is the most predominant and which one would you go with if you had a choice well you got to imagine where the tr- where the trend is going right the trend is going you know where country wayne is going you know what i'm saying content and it's 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 blowing up like to a point where numbers becomes bigger than anything you can imagine. It don't even say if you're good or bad. The fact of the matter is, you got the numbers to back up whatever it is you're doing. Yeah. And you're winning. And that becomes almost like a snowball effect. So once 20 million people see that 20 million people liked it, it might go from 20 to 200. And all of a sudden now you're breaking the internet. Now you're completely viral and everybody's gotta watch it. Yeah. And then you're winning, why? Because advertisers look at numbers. You walk into any company, you're like, look, you can advertise on my thing, because I have this many people watching and yeah. there's a lot of money in there. Somebody explained to me the other day that there that in some of these arenas in basketball, they will actually pay entertainers to sit around a logo. And That's then they, dope. and then they would pay and the company would actually pay 
way more than what these guys are paying these entertainers for. Let's say, you know, it might be like 500,000 for all the entertainers to sit there, but they might make a million just on advertising those guys being that close. Wow. Um, so to, to ask you a question, I think it's a good to have, a, a you know, a, a, all of it. But, you know, not to not to make fun of another situation because the numbers that broke down, I was like, OK, you making fun of 10 mil. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'm not rich, but 10 mil sounds good right about now. It's <laughs> a lot of money, man. I That's, mean, I think I, I, I'm on the side of I believe there's truth. It's like to, almost a million dollars a month, bro. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I'm on the side of truth uh, count on both sides. I feel like both you can do either or and still be successful as long as you capitalize on it and as long as you invest the time properly into it. I feel like they're both right. I I really do. It's just so happened that we broke the the we basically when we in, interviewed Faison, we kind of broke the the we started the conversation. I give you a time. Do you see what I'm saying? We, we started the conversation with, "Hey man, is 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 that side a thing or is this side a thing?" But in my in my reality, I feel like they both were a thing. I give, I give you, a, but you oh, know, okay. but the thing is Hit that, that record button. What's going on there? I don't know. Go ahead. But the thing that the thing with if this side is a thing or that side of thing, it shouldn't be a thing. It should be like we all getting money. It doesn't really matter. I give you a prime example, right? If you're a clothing brand, right, and let's say the only way you was able to make money was wholesaling it to stores. Yeah. Right. And then here comes the internet. And then the internet comes in like, oh, you know, like, you know, you can put a website up and you can actually send, sell your clothes to direct to consumer. Yeah, I remember when that happened, actually. So what Country Wayne is, I got a brand. I'm selling hundreds of thousands of units on my internet site where you're over there trying to sell to Macy's and, and Walmart and all those kind of guys. It's like, hey, you know, but in my predicament, let's say with a brand, I think I should do both. Why? Because one pays one bill and this one's paying another bill. And if you got both, then you're winning big time. But most people are like either or because they kind of hate on it. It's that Android versus Apple, that kind of thing. It's like, yeah, you're old school, I'm new school. It's like, yeah, but at the end of the day, if you did both, you'll be, you'll be making a lot, of, a lot more money. And I might be crazy, but in my mind, I was like, you know what? Because both of these things happen on my platform. I'm like, boy, it'd be dope if Faison get to get in a skit with Country Wayne. <laughs> Come on. Because that, that would make both of them, you know, it would Come look on. good for both of them. And I hope that's what will end up happening. I don't know if it's too far-fetched for me. But that's I know, what, that's what I know both of them like, cool as hell. Yeah. And if either one of them, and, and I know both of them, it would be dope because Faison is hilarious, bro. You just did, I, I remember I hit you up. I was yeah, trying to you get trying him. To get and I got him. Yep, and I got, got him. him. And I'm like, yep. when I got him, this dude is hilarious, dude. I can nah, laugh at this classic. dude. I, I went to his show. It was packed. Wall to wall, Classic. I went. I went to uh, a Country Wayne show was packed. Wall to wall, yeah. these boys doing their thing, man. They are. And I ain't lying. Like I, the star power is crazy, bro. Mm -hmm. They got that it factor. Even even Country Wayne, it's in a different new era aura. He doing his thing, bro. And I ain't mad at neither one of them. If, hey, man, four hundred eighty thousand uh, a a month, but that's a big, big. I mean, you know. If you just, <laughs> I can only imagine what I would do with four hundred thousand dollars a month. <laughs> a month, Lord mercy! The only thing you would have for me is some coordinates. I don't even have an address. They'd be like, "Where you live?" You know, it'd be some longitude and you know what I'm saying, <laughs> latitude. That's where you're gonna find me somewhere in the island somewhere. So no, you, they make a lot of money. You being from LA, you never did. You you wasn't a part of the gang activity. You you walked the other way, right? Yeah, I knew. I mean, you you, you knew about it. You lived. You was born in it. Yeah. I have surrounded Faison, in it. <laughs> I have Faison on here, and Faison was talking about uh, uh, Dave East, okay. and he said Dave East is from the West Coast. I mean, the East, East Coast. Coast yeah. How can he be a crip? Right. He said, uh, uh, "Repping a street that you ain't never heard of, like Ice Cube, for yeah, real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, like." He couldn't understand that, but the culture is so predominant. As I start to look at it, I'm like, "Bro, it, it inf Crips and Blood influenced." Everything when yeah. you look at it. your brother even told me about how he got checked up there in New York by uh, by somebody. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like you heard you heard when Game was talking about how he's like, in a, and it's real, it's real in the streets. Like when you come to LA, there's certain people you got to check in with. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I had that to come on. Here. You don't want to talk about that. That's when uh, Chris Brown was told to check in by Tola Marv. Yeah, check like, in. You got to check in. You saying right. you Pyru and all that and going around feeding yeah. off us. Yeah, check in. It, it, and everybody was like, he. Oh, why he saying that? 
it's real in Compton, man, or Bumpton, as they call it. Come and on. I'm like, man, uh, these people serious about this territory and what they've built up over time. You, and you now know, there's a lot of money in it. So that now you like using what they got. Mm -hmm. You got to be careful because now you do got to check in if it's something that. In. So so it's a different level uh, uh, in a different time. Mm -hmm. And it's just crazy how these things are developing, man. So, man, Kenyatta, man, it's always a blessing to I have you on Boss Talk, you. man. What uh -oh. you got? Uh -oh. um, because I know you're in. <laughs> To stocks and all of the, you know, the NFTs, finance. NFT, right? Do you know about NFTs, right? Yes, I do. Okay, I just saw an article, and this is an amazing article. Okay, it says a 13 year old girl became a multimillionaire mm -hmm. in one year selling NFTs mm -hmm. because she she does art. Mm -hmm. She draws like influential people, and mm -hmm. she turned her artwork into an NFT. Yep, and. Tell me about this wave. I mean, 13 year old girl, multimillionaire in one year? You, you just gotta pay attention. Like, you know, stop thinking that you gotta, you know, punch a clock nine to five. You know, uh, you gotta imagine, you just gotta see what I see. You know, that people are becoming very reclusive. You're, you're, you're one with your phone now. And people don't wanna be in atmospheres where they're having conversations. I'm talking to your man right now. He's like, I don't even wanna be around people. Why? Because I don't like talking to folks. Well, this is why you have the metaverse. And really, really essentially is, is that once you give yourself as an artist, you have to first qualify as an artist. And then once they give you the okay, then all your art becomes um, something that people can buy. Just like going to Target or something to that effect. It's a digital piece of artwork that you can put into your metaverse. Now, people who- When I think about metaverse, that's something actually I was introduced to by my kids. Cause you know, with, with all these games and all the things that they yeah. be playing, they be talking about, it. oh yeah, this happened in the metaverse and that happened in the metaverse. I'm like, huh? Yeah, but it's like all the games that you, you know, you're familiar with, they right. pretty much have a metaverse type exactly. theory anyway. But you gotta imagine that you have a young culture that has been making money off of selling shoes. Mm -hmm. So that was an introduce, introduction to the young entrepreneur. You sit out there for 24 hours, you pick up three or four shoes that you paid $150 for, and you turn around selling for four or five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, to a, you know, to an average person, that can turn out that can turn into like you do it enough, and you're at every store doing the same thing. Some of these little kids is making twenty, thirty thousand dollars selling shoes. Right. If you go to StockX, they actually have it so where you can see the shoes and, and how, how much, much they worth. value. The so way you can buy mm -hmm. a Kobe for 200 and sell it for 1000 if it's right. that rare. But then I remember when all of this first came in, it came in with Bitcoins. And then it moved into, um, what's that other one called? But now it's NFTs. Because before, I wasn't hearing about NFTs. So now it's moved, everybody's jumping on this NFT. Book. So what happens, okay, so like you had, when you, when you had bought, that type of stuff for a world, a metaverse, it was normally connected with that particular software and that app. But the metaverse now is open. Okay. So now it's an open open thing. And the thing is, like I'm telling you, people got educated on selling shoes. Mm -hmm. Now you can get educated on buying NFTs. Not only do you, you can buy them yourself. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? You, you can be an investor in it, right. uh, yourself. So you see somebody who's hot and let's say that person didn't bubble up yet. You buy that person's artwork, that's full collection. It might cost you ten thousand dollars. Next thing you know, he becomes really popular. So now that same NFT that you have, you can put it up for sale, and people will bid. You can take that ten thousand and make that ten thousand ten million. It's the same thing with like stocks. Like stocks. So what's the difference between an NFT or artwork? And stocks? Artwork. Just imagine artwork that you bought at a at a gallery. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like my man said, I bought something for two million. Next thing you know, it's four million. Right. Yeah. But what's the difference between a stock and an NFT? Well, well, a stock you actually own a company. Mm -hmm. You own, you actually own a piece of a company. So right. you know when I buy Ford, I actually own p the, whatever percent of Ford. Of Ford, right? Yeah. So right, Ford makes profits. You know so whatever. So this is just individual pieces that you can. But it's the same theory, though. You same buy theory. something, hopefully it'll increase in increase value, value, and you sell. But it. you can also lose on it. You can also lose on it. So wow. it's just a gamble. Just like Bitcoin. I mean, think about it. Bitcoin is not money. Right. It's literally an agreement between everybody who believes in the same game. Like almost like a pyramid scheme or whatever the case is, whatever you want to make up, Bitcoin is made up mm -hmm. and people put value on it. If people think it's valuable and they think that it's the only currency that's going to work out, learn on like, well, then good. <coughs> Excuse it's $40,000. But if everybody's like, no, it's garbage and we're going to shut it down and it'll drop from 40 to like 20. Mm -hmm. But again, it's, it's, it's real money. You can actually buy and sell Bitcoin and never see it, never smell it, never know what's in your, it's just numbers, this is made up numbers. And so 
nowadays it's hard for people of our culture and our age group to understand having valuable things that have absolutely no substance. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, when we buy a car, we can feel it, smell it and drive it. Nowadays I can buy a car, never see it and make money. Mm. Dang, Mm -hmm. that's dope. I mean, I'll I'll give you one last thing. One last thing. My brother hit me to something kind of dope the other day and it was about um, uh, Airbnbs. Mm-hmm. It was a guy who made millions of dollars on Airbnb just renting apartments. So he would go rent this apartment and then Airbnb it against the leasing, whatever. And he would just go to apartment and apartment and apartment and lease all and, and then have all these Airbnbs for all these apartments and make money. Mm-hmm. He don't even own the property. Right. And he's able to make this kind of money. So yeah. nowadays you got to think different. It's not all about tangible stuff. It's all about the hype. You know, you want to know why music is what it is because it has an algorithm. It's about the hype. My son told me that this one particular guy, Jay Davis, is more popular than Prince. And I've never heard one of his man's songs. But he's more popular than Prince because of the numbers. Wow. I think, hey, man, great, great information, man. As usual, you give us a hell of a show every time you come down from L.A., man. Thank you for coming on Boss Talk again. Um, Man, uh, just want to say... um, Thank you for all the people you sent our way for when we came to L.A. and you embraced us. As usual, you wouldn't have another choice because we family. But anyway, uh, thank you for sending Stone Mecca. You know, he came through, blessed our game, man. Um, Next, we're going to get that far side, man. Far side is coming, right? Yeah, got to get that far side. Far side is coming. When are they supposed to be in Texas? Okay, so they're going to be performing in in, um, in, uh, in Dallas on on 420. So they're coming here? Yeah, and then they're also going to be in Austin on the 19th. So Stone Mecca and Farside and it's, it's a couple of long they pull up, it's, it's it's going down. Yeah, like so you know that already. All you gotta West do is Coast say baby. the word, man. Thank you so much for connecting with us. How are we doing? I mean, we are trying to pull this off, man. Yeah, no, nah, I, I think <laughs> I tell people all about boss talk, and uh, <laughs> you know, you guys are growing the way you're supposed to grow, one step at a time, man. And it's like you know, this is easy, y'all, because this is what you do. This is your service. Yeah. You're servicing our culture with information that. It, it might not be viral, but it's good information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, you go to this spot, why? Because the cooking is great. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like, it, it, it don't have to be, you know, it can be Melba, Melba's, but it don't have to be like whatever, you know, like thousand, you know, spot like McDonald's or something like that. Yeah, like, yeah. Yo, at the end of the day, when they come see you, they come and get that cooking. And I think your show show is a cooking because you, you carry not just West Coast, you do South, Southern, New York, you find whatever Everybody. information that comes in here and nobody does that. Everybody's trying to find the most sensational guy and trying to make those numbers. You guys are like, look, we just talking, let's go. It's boss talk. Yeah, yeah, and, and just giving everybody opportunity to shine, man, because everybody's bosses in their own way. Mm-hmm. And that's what people don't understand. There's a little boss in every one of us. There's a big boss in me. Shout out to Boss Talk 101. Boss, the boss Talk 101. <laughs> Say it with your chest. Whoa. We out? You know? We out? Yes, we out. Man. Dang, man. Hey, man, how can people get a hold of you? Well, you can uh, follow us on uh, a cool uh, clothing. Uh, that's one thing. And then we also have uh, Vision Sales LA on Instagram. Um, you can you can you can call me, but I'm not gonna put that out there in the world. But anyway, um, yeah, just just have them follow your 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 situation and have the link. Let's look, let's put a link on on the site for that way that they can find us there as well. I'll definitely put it up there, man. Thank you so but much. Peace for out to a uh, cool a hustle gang and everybody that we work with. And unique fashion, you know, unique, unique fashion, you know what I'm boss talk, one on one, all that stuff just wrapped funny, up I, in a bow. Yeah, what's, what's funny is this is my second time coming here, but it's crazy. It's the second time I'm coming here in ten years, man. But we've been here for fifteen. Yeah, that's awesome. It, it's just it like, like, and and it's really, it's something. It's for me, it's bigger than money. To be honest, which is just a way of having something to where our people will have an outlet because yeah. there aren't many black owned businesses. Period. You go around, you've been around this country, you've been looking at all these places, you can count them on a finger, each city you go into. You remember when I was in Miami and I t- called you and I was like, Kenyatta, who sell a coup out here? And you hooked me up with Purple Carpet, my boy Gary out there, and we've been friends ever since because of you. That's and, 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 and it's just like when I hit different hoods, when I'm in Chicago, I think I, I definitely called you if I didn't just look it up. And I'm like, where are these guys at that's selling a coup? 
or in Detroit. Wherever I go, I'm looking for that culture for our people, man. Even in L.A., shout out to, uh, you know, even the marathon when I went over there, just Nipsey Hussle, meeting him at Magic and then, you know, connecting with his family. <coughs> this culture, man. This Beautiful. is what we do, man. I love at it. At the end of the day, we doing our thing. Yep. No matter how you look at it, you can look at it and say it's raggly, nigga, but we here. We you here. know what I mean? <laughs> nah, we stay fly. Man, check we it, man. And we stay de We definitely setting trends, man. Trendsetters, man. Holla at your boy. <laughs> it's a boy. unique hustle. Here we are.